Hi, this is Kathy Brandon, Happiness Chick. Welcome to another segment of Ready for Happiness Live. I'd like to introduce my co-host, Don Pernum. Hi, Don. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. How are you doing today? I am I spectacular. Am. Couldn't ask for too much better. I'm going to get in trouble. Well, I'm so happy today. I could just pop right out of my skin. <laughs> no, stay in, please. You yeah, look I know, right? Skinless happiness, chick. That's what we need. Woo! -hoo! Welcome, everybody. We have a really, really exciting guest today. And I'm not sure why my picture's showing up there instead of my face, but we'll keep rolling with it. This is a live show, so whatever happens on the show is what we put out there. We really want to show up in this world as authentic, and that's part of what this show is, is we are here to inspire people to create their own unique way of being happy in this world. And in order to do that, we have different people on the show sharing what is making them happy, what kind of life they're creating inside their unique happy. And with that introduction, I want to introduce Marusha Murphy. And hey, Kathy, and before you introduce her, her, we do see you. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Good, good. Good. Marusha is, oh gosh, let's see, where do I start with Marusha? <laughs> I met Marusha years ago. And Marusha and her husband are marketing geniuses. What they've done, and I'll let her talk a little bit about it, but I want to kind of give you a little teaser about who she is and who you are meeting today because she's juicy. Marusha came to the table, and what she wanted to do was she really wanted to create a unique place. And she really is a very authentic, genuine individual. And so what she really wanted to do was she wanted to to work with messengers and people who really wanted to change the world. And so what her and her husband did is they did some, some projects initially to kind of get their feet wet in this kind of industry of messengers. And what they chose to do was I've watched them for years. They have created this, this machine, this, this marketing machine where they take people who are very, very talented and they allow you to be seen in the way that you want to be seen. And so welcome, Marusha. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Hi Don. It's nice to, nice be, here. to be here. We're well, really I'm excited happy. to have you. Yeah. I can't Thank wait you to for having me. I can't wait to introduce everybody to you, Marusha. And let's kick it right off. Tell us where you're from. Tell us who Marusha Murphy is and how did you get to Houston, Texas? Well, I'm actually, um, uh, Kathy, we're actually in Austin, Texas now, um, which is part of our happy. Um, <laughs> we came to, gosh, we came to uh, Austin through Houston, but from Orlando, Florida, originally. And um, basically, uh, a little bit about me. I'm a mom. I have now two girls. Um, one is two months old, just about, and the other one is four and a half. <laughs> and um, we, you know, I was working in the corporate sector. Um, it, I left that in 2008 and decided to um, pursue similar things to what I had done. Um, offline, if you will, and my corporate job, which was training um, and teaching folks, um, uh, college students and faculty and staff at a university in Florida, um, how to be their full self, their full, th in their fullness of life. Um, I was director of multicultural affairs at that time. Um, but I was also working, I loved it, it was my favorite work in the whole wide world. Um, and at the same time, I was working 100, 120 hour weeks. And when I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter, I told them, I said, hey, I'm due in September. And they're like, ugh. So, yeah, that's going to cut into, like, student orientation and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, you, you know, Marusha, as I'm listening to your story, how did you find time to have a baby? Right, 120 hours a week. Yeah, no, that's a great question. It was uh, during one of the holidays. Holiday breaks, actually. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. We don't need to go any further. I just was dying to know. <laughs> That's really, really funny. Yeah, no, and, uh, you know, actually, the, the joke was at the time, you know, I had a couch in my office, and 
date nights with my husband were at student events and stuff like that. And um, the week after I, I left my work, um, it was that June, um, I looked at my husband and I said, so, hi, my name is Marcia, who are you? So, you know, we were trying to figure out who we are because my whole life was wrapped around my work at that time. Long story short, he got a job in uh, Houston, Texas, his dream job. And I became a, you know, a stay-at-home mom, and I was trying to figure out how that world worked after having worked, you know, so many hours, and that was my identity. It was a totally different identity. And basically, um, out of my frustration, out of my trying to figure out how to make it work, I had lunch with my husband husband's boss at the time, this gentleman by the name of David Fry. And basically, he I just grilled him about why we were basically in Houston at that time, because I just didn't understand why my role shifted so And long story short, um, I guess my grilling worked, and he, I, I didn't expect it to work. I didn't know what it, where it was going to go. I just wanted to ask him a lot of questions. But he said, man, you're asking questions that are really making me think. And in a way that that most people don't make me think. And I really like that. I think there's something within you that needs to come out. And so, long story short, he hired me to, to run um, the interviews for this for virtual training seminars that he was putting together. They were called telesummits, and we had a little telesummit wing of his business. So, all in all, we ended up creating, uh, I think, 22 telesummits, interviewing over 400 um, experts, authors, um, to create these training events uh, around different practices in marketing. Um, and it really started to make me re recognize and see, wow, these gifts that I've had um, in the real world, if you will, in the corporate world, if I tweaked them in just a, a certain way, um, I could actually bring it online, and I could do it in a way that really fulfills me because I was able to be with my daughter at the time and take care of her still. Um, and be the primary, the primary caregiver, caregiver, you know, for yeah, her, which is something that we wanted not as a family, as a family. So, yeah, in a nutshell, that's how my business started, and ever since then, it's been four years now. Um, we've grown. We now support, you know, author, best-selling authors, speakers, and trainers to really look at how their message is getting out there in the world. As you mentioned, Kathy, really find the authenticity in their voice. And then create training programs uh, and virtual events to captivate that message and really begin to attract the right type of following uh, around them. So yeah, that's what we do. I'm absolutely fascinated by it. You went through this world, you had a 120 an hour week job. How long did that go on, number one? And number two, you obviously have, and I can hear it in your tone, a very deep and caring relationship with your husband. How were you able to do that? Because there's so many people out there that are putting in the time they need to into their business, but they're finding ways to neglect their families, and they're not having those conversations, and they're not making it work. So what was unique about your situation? How did you do it? Hmm. You know, that's a great question. Um, well, to answer the first question, 120 hours, I did that for, uh, gosh, since I pretty much left college. <laughs> I worked uh, right after college. I was an admission counselor and then decided to join that division of uh, of the college. While I was also getting my master's, I forgot to tell you that part too. I was getting my master's in counseling at the same time. <laughs> so that was in addition to the 100 hour weeks. Um, but, um, but, you know, we made a commitment, a pact uh, to each other that said, okay, you know, we want each other to live a life that brings joy to each other, that has love and respect as the primary foundation um, of what we do, of how we are with each other. Um, and at that time, I really felt that, and I still feel that, to change the world, it takes, it takes work. It takes um, and, um, and it takes time. It, it takes, takes investment. Time, it takes investment. And when I first was getting started my career, the only way I could, I thought I could see myself making that world change was being there in person every day, all hours of the day, to make that impact um, in that particular community. Um, when 
Well, and Dennis and I, and I lovingly call him Murph, and since you guys are friends, you can call him Murph, too, um, for our last name, Murphy. Um, that's a whole other story, how I, that's how I actually met him, was by him calling himself Murph to me, so it just has stuck. But, um... Basically, Basically, you know, you know when, he when he introduced to me this world of online, world of online uh, marketing, online training, marketing, online training, I was kind of skeptical at first. I mean, he had been in the industry about, uh, gosh, gosh, how many years is that now? Like 15 I mean, years? It was now, like around 95 when he started. And so he had been trying to tell me about this online marketing stuff forever. I mean, and, and I was kind of like, that, uh -huh, that's nice, honey. And it was like blank, you know, like totally going over my head until, you know, it yeah. really made a, it uh, made a huge uh, difference when he started to show me that, wait, you can actually do both. You can actually, you can actually, be, a you can actually be a mom. You can actually, um, um, you know, enjoy your work, yeah, enjoy your work in, your own time. in your own time. And, um, and, and you know, and, and you can make it work all all while through the internet. You know what I mean? So, um, I guess it's a convoluted way of saying, like, we, he and I had that as a, foundation. had that as a foundation. You know, we had talked you know, about it at the beginning. the beginning. We went through premarital we counseling um, before, um, we before we were even engaged, we were engaged. Um, and, um, decided, and decided, you know, what our family's, family's values, values, values going to be if we were, were ever to be engaged, engaged, and, then, engaged and, then, and, then, and then, you know, then, you know, married, married later, later on. Later on. Um, and um, as time has gone on, it's really been about having family meetings. You know, the you two know, of us sit down, us sit down weekly, weekly. Um, um, actually, more, actually than more than that, any time that we want to talk to each other because we're in the same we're office, the same office. <laughs> this time, <laughs> um, but just um, to work through, through, you know, whatever is whatever coming up for us and, and make sure that we each have each sure other, have space for each other, or space apart from each other with our own friends to do our own things, you know, and then be able to come back together and enjoy each other that much more. Enjoy each other that much more. That's great. I think that's really good. I think it's important for us to understand and for us to talk about and, and, and show people a real living, breathing example of being that mom that's home with the kids and being a highly, highly effective professional. You know, when I started my business seven years ago, that's the whole reason I started it too, Marusha, is you know, I didn't want to be one of these moms that got home at 7 o'clock and their kids were in bed by 8. Hmm. And, you know, I wanted time. I want to be that mom that picks up their children from school. And this year I've just made my kids start walking home from school and they feel like it's the most, I am the most selfish mom known to man, although we only live two blocks <laughs> from the school. But, you know, they got used to that and Mason came home and I know you're going to, have this with your daughter too. He's like, Mommy, I just like you picking me up from school. And I'm like, yes, but you have to understand in order to pick you up from school, you know, people with a regular job can't just leave their job to go pick up their kids. Yeah. yeah. And so what I need for you guys to do is I need you, for you guys to walk home because we're going to have to blend our schedules. And they're like, oh, okay, I guess it's okay for you to have that 30-minute call because that's <laughs> not how long it takes me to get out of school. And so that's what they tell people. My mommy just is on the internet and she's on the phone and that's her job. Oh, that's so, oh, funny. That's so funny. Well, and then there comes that time when I've got a 17-year-old and they don't want to be fucking with dad out in public. Don't drop me off at school. You go down there. <laughs> I know. We have to really make the most of these times when the kids really want to be around us, you know? Um, and for me, it's, you know, it's this legacy thing, you know? Like, I love that when my daughter goes to ballet, and actually, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that picture of those, those girls that have been, like, these little girls, like, you know, taking a ballet class, and that one kid is, like, upside down um, on, the, on the bar. That's my daughter. That's my I mean, daughter. literally, I, mean, I was, was uh, kind of nervous at first, you know, when I saw her um, in ballet a few weeks ago, and she was making faces and, like, kind of being that goofball in the class, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. At first, I was a little embarrassed, you know. I was like, okay, well, how am I, am I going to be judged? Are all the other parents going to think I'm kind of crazy or, you know, because my daughter's doing this? And you know how moms are, right? They all, you know, we all kind of 
do that, unfortunately, and it's not good. Um, and so I kind of had that, and then I kind of caught myself, and I said, wait a second. I'm actually modeling that for my daughter. No wonder why you know she's feeling free enough to be herself and have fun in a class that's called creative dance, not like you know ballet mastery or anything. And and I realized that that's that's part of it. Like this legacy that you we as parents get to have with our kids because we've chosen a lifestyle that's that's. Allowed us, allowed us to us unleash, unleash our own, our own um, way of doing things, our own creativity, our own our own way of uh, you know voicing how we want to be happy. You know, you know? And, and that's powerful. Yeah, that's powerful. I think it is. And Marcia, one other question for you because I, I think that you and Dennis did this deliberately, or you did this deliberately. We've talked about this. You know, when I started my business, I started my business and I changed my lifestyle because. You know, I do want to show my children a new way of living. Mm -hmm. And not that anybody was wrong for the way they taught me how to live, but I didn't want my children growing up feeling like they had to follow a very specific path in order yeah, to yeah. be happy. And I find that very challenging. And I seem to think, based on what I've heard you tell me before and part of what you talked about today, you and Dennis have deliberately created an environment not only for your friends and family to see, but for your children to see, where they have the freedom to pursue that individuality. Mm. And was that deliberate for you and Dennis, or is it something because that's who you are that it's just come out? Yeah, yeah. I, you, I, know, I, you know, I think it's I think a mixture it's a of mixture both, both probably. probably. You know, I you know, sometimes. I sometimes I see my daughter already starting to roll her eyes say, Mom, I know. I know I'm allowed to be myself. Kind of thing, you know, like, Mom, you told me I can wear whatever I want to wear to school. You know, you know, obviously with some parameters and some boundaries, of course. But she, you know, I let her express her creativity through her clothes because that's, I can see that's something that she really loves, you know. And so she might have... You know, polka dot. You know, last night, actually, she had a cute polka dot topped with like some striped pants, and she was like, "But I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. like I am," you know. Like and it just made me like smile because like, just how she's wanting to present herself to the world. Um, so I guess part of it is, you know, because we are making those choices to allow her to make those choices for herself, um, and have always done that. You know, we give her, okay, you can have. We'll give her boundaries, right? We'll give her but we'll say, boundaries, right? you can have this choice or this choice. Which of these choices do you want to make? Um, or, you know, in that sense with clothing or whatnot, give her, you know, she can't wear, obviously, like sandals when it's snowing outside or anything like that. You know what I mean? But she can choose the fashion that she wants. And I think, you know, as... Uh, business, owners uh, business owners in our business, in our business. we've, done the, we've done the same thing. You know, we look we at things look and at say, things okay, okay, we can make this choice make today, this choice today um, um, to, to increase our revenue increase in this way or increase revenue this way. And then we look at we like look at what, is like what is successful in those things and, those and then and put, and put our own creativity, our own flair, if you will, into those things. Um, so she sees that, and our kids see that, and and I hope they always take that on, make that one of the Values and life. and life. Without a doubt, and I, and I definitely want to recognize you and, and congratulate you on giving your children so much choice. Like, you know, I've gotten a lot of criticism for raising my children with choice. Mm. And, mm. you know, sometimes I wonder if I started them on the choice train a little too early because now, you know, they will exercise that choice. Whether I want them <laughs> to have, Mommy, I have a choice, you know. I want the third choice, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, right, you're like, okay, you can have a brownie or you can have a switch roll. And they're like, no, I think I want, you know, whatever, a bowl of Lucky Charms. Or, sure, you sure. know, so I, I want to say hats off to you because I really do believe that the more choice we give our children young, we are exercising those muscles for them. And so even though, you know, it may seem harder when they're a toddler and we've given them choice, um, I think we're really setting up a good standard for them to be adults. Now, one question I want to ask you, because I do this in my work too, you know, we're in the marketing realm, we're in the realm of branding, we're mm -hmm. in the realm of helping business owners grow. 
One of the things, and I'm going to have to close up with this because I know we're running low on time, but one of the questions I want to ask you is how difficult do you find it to help people really let go of all the models of successful businesses that they've seen and really embrace where they are unique? Mm. Like I know you bump into this. I bump into it too. Like we oh, both yeah. do products and services. We both brand. We both market. And what I find is a lot of times when people come in, they are so deliciously unique, mm. but they are so locked in, oh, I want the Tony Robbins way, or oh, I want to be Seth Godin, that yeah. they're yeah. so busy following that model, they've lost all sense of who they are. Like, talk about how you break somebody out of that. Mm. Mm. Well, I think, well, I think it, it actually, actually that touches on something that... that, that you know, we can look at it as a marketing issue or a branding issue. But I think the real issue is is inviting someone to find confidence and um, trust in who they are. So a lot of times it's really more of a leadership issue. Meaning, are you allowing yourself to be led by others and by, others by, and by all, these all these external factors, factors. or, you, or, or can, can you take the take challenge, challenge, take the risk, the risk to look within, look yourself, within yourself to find that leader, find that leader emerge. emerge. So when I take, so when I take uh, on, a client, uh, on a client, I invite them into that, conversation. Them into that conversation before we before go into we marketing, marketing, before we, before we talk about how, about how to, how to name, something name something or, or sell something, sell something or whatever. whatever. It's really about getting clear on who that person wants to be and how that person wants to thrive in this world. And so, you know, we get into that conversation. We kind of dig into that for a while. And sometimes that conversation takes a day. Sometimes that conversation takes three months. You know, it just depends on that person and that tape recorder. Or that, or that I guess I in guess today's day and age, you know, that CD player, player that goes on in their head, head. <laughs> yeah. and where and it's where getting, getting stuck. stuck. And so a lot so of a the lot work of I do with my clients, clients I guess, like my, my I, don't know, I don't know, some people call this my ninja move, I guess, is really <laughs> that we focus on the focus the leadership, on the leadership uh, of that uh, person and the identity that person, identity that person wants to have in this world. And when we can get clear on that, then the messaging, the marketing, the sales flow much easier, flow much easier. Uh, once, uh, once once that once piece that is, piece um, is um, settled, settled and and and, and, and held in like held in, with a strong foundation as to who that person wants that to, be person in the world. to be in the world. You know, I think that's really important. I'm glad you shared that and I'm glad you shared it that way. Because a lot of times and Dawn you see this with your with the marriage work that you do and the relationship work you do. You know, we show up in our dream being authentic in who we want because we identify a problem that's out there that's not being solved. Mm -hmm. We identify some sort of problem and we want to stand in that solution. But what we bump up against professionally and personally, we do it in marriage, we do it in our business world, is we bump up against this whole vision of who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times in the business world, a lot of people, they kind of poo-poo that whole, oh, who are you? What do you want to be when you grow up? You know, kind of the, the gushy stuff on the inside. But what people don't understand, and I love the fact that you teach this out, Marusha, is the leaders that we all admire are the renegades. Mm. You know, we're over here looking at the Tony Robbins and the Seth Godin's and the Richard Branson's and the Oprah's, and if you read their life story, they went against the grain. Mm -hmm. They did something mm -hmm. different. They locked into, just like you said, who they want to be in the world. And then they started moving forward in their vision. So I want to leave everybody with this kind of information. You know, it's important as much as everybody around you and as much as you may not want to look at who you want to be and how you want to show up in the world, I think it's very important for us to really make that decision of who we want to be and what we want to be in the world. And I want you to... Look at Marusha Murphy. Go to her website. Marusha, tell us how we can get in touch with you. Tell us how our audience can reach out to you and connect with you. Sure, absolutely. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, they can go to my website. It's at Captivate, Captivate Your Clients. 
Com. And actually, I have a gift for everyone that chooses to take it. Um, right there on my site, you can uh, get a an audio training that I've created. And so you can, you know, put it onto your iPhone, you know, listen on iTunes or any MP3 player that you have or right on your computer. And basically, it's the 10 ways, 10 simple ways you can begin to captivate your audience, your audience. it's an audience that's There's been an established audience, audience that you go in front of every day, and, but you're kind of bored with it, <laughs> or you're feeling like you're, you're feeling stale, you're not in your full element, um, or a brand new community that you want to create. So that that's something that I've created, and I've had you know a lot of success uh, with folks listening to that training and taking the action based on what it's shared uh, and seeing some amazing results. Well, I can tell you right now, some of these hangouts over. I'm going to your website and I'm downloading. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Don. <laughs> and definitely reach out to Marusha. Reach out to Don Pernum. Uh, Don and his wife Nicole, they are where business meets family, healthy business, healthy family. So if you are a business owner who is married or in a serious relationship, you definitely want to reach out to Don and Nicole Purnum. They are where it's at for that kind of balance. Marusha Murphy, you want to reach out to her. You know, if, if you're not getting the results that you want, and Marusha works with, with world changers. And so if you have this desire to be a world changer, which we all do in some capacity, reach out to Marusha, reach out to Dawn, reach out to me. We are here to show you people who are making it happen, people who are creating their own unique way of being happy in this world and are showing you how to do it. So please join us next time. This is the Happiness Chick with Ready for Happiness Live. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.